If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 6. I have a kingdom assignment this morning. The Spirit of God impressed upon my heart this week to bring a message that might shake the church, it might shake your life. What I'm going to speak to you today, I don't believe probably is being preached in 1% of churches in America today. And I am not sure why. It seems obvious to me that it is very confusing that church leaders are not speaking about this issue that is right in front of us. What I want to preach shouldn't be controversial at all in the church. My subject today is this. The devil is real and evil has been unleashed. In a few minutes, I will ask you to make a decision to renounce evil and acknowledge that you need to make a change in your life. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, starting with verse 10. It says, finally, my brethren... Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Somebody say amen. amen. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore... Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Amen. The time that we're living in right now isn't a moment. It is the moment of our lifetime. We're at an absolute critical turning point in the church, in our nation, in Western civilization, if not the entire world. And for those who are perceptive in the spirit, it is not difficult to discern the moment that we're living in right now. That, to me, is obvious. Something is going on. Something has been released. Something is manifesting itself like never before in our history. Listen, the devil is real. No, I don't think you heard me. The devil is real and evil has been released in an unprecedented way. It is just true, my friends. No one can deny it. And I'm not here to pick a fight with other churches, pastors, or church leaders. I just call it the way I see it. But somewhere along the line, in America's development of church, we have now ordained professional clergy. Instead of being men and women of God who have the courage to call evil evil, preachers have become puppets to the power brokers in the church, not wanting to offend, not wanting to cause a conflict, but being politically correct and creating a spiritual amusement park. So preachers have become pro puppets instead of prophets. And if we are going to see a move of God in our nation, in our state, and in our churches, it is only going to happen when pastors decide that they are going to walk into their biblical role as a prophet and declare what is happening in America and stop the type of preaching that just make people feel good and tickle people's ears and not deal with the real issue that is in front of us. The devil is real and evil has been unleashed over the United States of America. I believe, I, I believe, I believe that the people of God want to clarity, clarity and call what God is saying in this moment. The people of God are wanting to hear the unadulterated, uncompromised word of God of what God is saying in the hour that we are living right now. 
I, can, I, I know you probably know this, but I'm just going to say it. If you're looking for a user-friendly, if you're looking for taste great and less filling, if you're looking for something quiet and nice that doesn't disturb anything, you probably made a wrong turn on Destiny Drive. That's not how we roll here at Destiny. Because in this church, we understand that there is a battle that is raging. We understand the moment that we are living in. In this church, we understand the importance of the prophetic word. We understand in this church, thus saith the Lord my God. We understand in this church, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying in this moment to the church. And the Spirit of God is saying to the church... And the Spirit of God is saying to every believer, we are in a battle. We are in a battle. That we are in the end times. Jesus said it this way in Matthew chapter 11. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent and the violent take it by force. Amen. Leave that up there. Come on. I want you to look at that. You don't even think that's in your Bible. You, you don't. You don't think it's in your Bible, but it is. Jesus said it. And the reason I am preaching this sermon, because I think the wind has been taken out of the cells of us in 2020. After being attacked uh, with our constitutional rights and our religious liberties, we come to a place in 2021, we're tired of the fights. We're, we're, we're done. You know, with all the political stuff, we're just tired. The fact of the matter is this. The American church, the American Christian doesn't understand persecution. Come on. Doesn't understand that we have to continue to contend for our faith. That this fight that we are in isn't going away anytime soon. Normal church is a thing of the past. And we must not become apathetic. We must not become complacent in this moment. In fact, that's exactly what the devil would want to do in the church and in believers' life. It doesn't matter if you're on fire or you're complacent and you think everything's going to work out, everything's going to be okay. My job, my kingdom assignment today is to convince you that the devil is real. Satan is on the loose. And we're experiencing it right now in an unprecedented way. You're seeing it in the natural, but it's happening in the supernatural. What we're up against is demonic. Hey. Nobody says that anymore. What we're up against is principalities and powers and rulers of this dark age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Call it what you want to call it. But what is happening in our nation, in our state, in our world, and even in our churches is absolute evil. Don't color it any other way. Don't define it with any other kind of adjective. What is happening in this moment is demonic. It is evil. It has been authored in hell by Satan himself. Well, I'm preaching better than you're hey, talking. Come on. I asked God this week, somehow, some way, to wake up the church, to get people to understand that Satan is loose, and he's causing absolute devastation in people's lives, in your lives, in people's family, in your family. 
in our government, in our public schools, and in our nation. Satan has come against America with everything he has in his arsenal. And you've got to understand, he is also coming against the church. He's coming against pastors. Have you read your news? We got pastors in Canada being arrested for preaching the gospel. He is coming against believers who are willing to fight against the insanity of wickedness that has been legislated as normal in our country. Satan has declared one last all-out offensive and the devil isn't back, uh, backing down just because in a month we don't have to wear masks anymore. What a joke. What a pathetic joke. This isn't about opening the doors of the church any longer. This is about evil that has been unleashed over America in churches and wants to destroy our nation. That's what it's about in this moment right now. And I just want to announce to this church that we are not going to bury our heads in the sand. We are not going to be politically correct and be silent and stay in the box that our culture wants us to live in. We are going to speak up. We are going to stand up. We are going to call evil for what it is. It's evil. It's satanic. It's demonic. It is from the pit of hell. The devil is real. And evil has been unleashed over our nation. And believers have got to use their voice in this moment. We have got to break the silence of weak Christianity so that we will take a stand. Did you not re hear the scripture I read? Ephesians 6, it says, in the evil day when you have done all, not just attend church on a Sunday morning, not just to listen in your car to worship move. When you have done all, we must stand. We must stand, church. It is time for the church to stand up. Come on. When is somebody going to get mad? When is somebody going to get angry enough to do something about it. You must understand, the devil hates you. Come on. You need to know your theology. You need to know your theology. Don't be a stupid Christian. Know your theology. John chapter 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan hates you. He hates your family. He hates your son. He hates your daughter. He hates your grandchildren. Whether you are lukewarm, complacent, a, a, a sinner on Monday through Saturday and trying to be a saint on Sunday, or you are red hot, Fire baptized, Holy Spirit filled, hey. on fire believer. Hey, hey, don't listen. It doesn't matter. He wants to destroy your life and he will use every means he can to destroy you and your family and your kids. You must understand the devil despises you. You must understand that the devil wants to unleash the forces of hell against churches like this like pastors, like myself, because we are bold enough to call things the way they are, that we're not going to sugarcoat it around here. I'm not going to yell at you to get your attention. I am simply going to speak the truth to you. If you have an ear, hear what the Spirit of God is saying right now. God is calling the church above the status quo. It hasn't worked. God is calling the church out of being normal. The Spirit of God is saying in this moment, he said to me this week, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Hear what the Spirit of God says in this moment. Behold, I'm raising up a church for these last days. Behold, I am looking that my eyes are scanning, going back and forth, looking for somebody's heart who is fully devoted to him. The Spirit of God is saying, is there anyone here that is bold enough to take a stand against wickedness that will walk away and not look back at the Sodom and the Gomorrah of our day? 
Righteousness has become an abnormal thing in churches. Holiness is a bad word for believers to use. Yes, even in the church, we now call evil good and good evil. Can you believe it? Can you believe it, church? There's been a blending, amalgamation of truth and the word of God. The spirit of the age with the doctrines of devils. And if you're not spiritual, you will never see it for what it is. I get this comment all the time. Thank you, Pastor Greg. Thank you for taking a stand. This week, somebody called me a gangster. <laughs> you're, you're a gangster. You're a gangster. <laughs> then they go, I, I'm proud to attend Destiny. I tell my friends wherever I go, I go to Destiny, and they raise their eyes and say, oh, oh. You, 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 you go to that church? Why do they respond that way? Because we have not bought into the social norm. We are not conforming to the image of this world. Culture wants to water down the truth about humanity. Listen to me online. We say we are just weak, and God says you're wicked. We say we have a sickness, and God says you're sinful. We call it dysfunctional, and God says it's deviant behavior. We say we've been liberated, and God says you're just lying to yourself. We have so much greasy grace that has been propagated in the church. We don't ever use the words repentance, conviction, wickedness, holiness, and righteousness in the church anymore. What's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? Pastors and life coaches look at me. Stop. Stop the good, night, good life now talk. Become the best version of you talk. Ten steps to being happy again talk. We have been blinded to the revelation that we are in a fight, we are in a battle, we are in a struggle. The devil is loose and evil has been unleashed over America. This isn't about conservatism and liberalism. This is not. The, this isn't about democracy and communism. That's just a manifestation of what's behind this What's behind this is the destruction of our nation and its founding values. And there are people that Satan are using as pawns because Satan has an agenda to destroy the fabric of America. I, why aren't other pastors saying what I'm saying this morning? We got to deal with the issue. If you don't cut it at the root, you're not going to get rid of the fruits. Ah, I just need to stop. This mindset has infiltrated the church so that we cannot any longer distinguish between truth and lie. So we have a nation now that is turning its back on its Christian heritage. We're in a reality of this moment right now. We have to stop the political posturing, and call it for what it is. It's evil. It's demonic. It's from the pit of hell. Listen, the devil is real, and evil has been unleashed over our nation. I understand. I understand. We have to fight in the natural. I get it. I'm not stupid. I understand we need to educate churches across America about our religious freedoms. We should. We do that here. I understand that we need to educate believers across America about the real history of the United States, not this 1619 crap. 
I understand that we need to elect good Bible-believing Christians to every political office, whether it's local, state, or national. I get it. I get it. I get it. But in the midst of that, let us not lose sight of what's behind the destruction of our nation, what's behind the destruction of our family unit, what is behind the aborted babies, what is behind the opiate crisis, what is behind the abuse in our homes, what is behind alcoholism, what is behind the collapse of our relationship with Israel, God's chosen people. Let us not forget that we are in a spiritual battle. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against spiritual hosts of wickedness and heavenly phrases. My friends, let us never forget that every single day we engage in a spiritual battle between heaven and hell. Every single day our assignment is to walk right next to the gates of hell. Let us never forget that we are called to be salt and light in the midst of darkness and decay. Let us never forget, we are called to be the army of God as the believers in our nation. That's who we are. That's our call right now. That's our call. Can I just say something? I tell you what's on my mind without a filter. I don't just want partial birth abortions outlawed. I just don't want legislation that prevent, uh, prohibits my taxpayers' money to kill the unborn. Here's what I want. I want the Supreme Court to reverse Roe versus Wade. That's what I want. I want that curse off of our nation. Let's support the unborn. Since I started, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you else what I want. <laughs> I want our government to stay out of what our families and our church's responsibility is. <laughs> Go ahead and educate our kids on the ABCs, but stay out of human sexuality. And from my perspective, you have screwed up the whole thing. We have a bunch of kids that are confused, and they're confused because you're, you idiots have made them confused. In fact, in fact, if you're not going to stop propagating deviant lifestyles in public education, give me my money back. I want to send these kids to the schools that believe the word of God. I have a right as a parent. I have a right as a citizen to tell me how to educate my kids. You can't do that. You can't do that. You wonder why people can't stand me. <laughs> you, can, you, under, you, you understand why people, when I go to the mall, look at me crossways. <laughs> Which way is our nation going to go? We can reverse the direction of the United States of America overnight if just one thing happened. If pastors and church leaders and believers that in church would say, you have gone far enough, we are going to revolt against this wickedness, this insanity, the corruption of government, and we are going to be heard. We're not going to be silent. We're going to stand up for our rights. If that would happen in pulpits in America next week, we would see a national revival of morality, righteousness, and holiness that that would sweep across our nation. We preserve nature and kill babies. We're smarter, but we're not wiser. We go faster, but we end up nowhere. We have smart houses, but sick families. We have more money and pleasure, but we don't give anything to God. Why? Because the devil is real and evil has been unleashed.
1 Timothy chapter 4 says this. Now the Spirit expresses, expressly says in the later times, last days, some will depart from the faith. Did you see that? Some, not, not outside, inside the church, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Adultery is no longer a sin and can't be preached in our pulpits anymore. Homosexuality is no longer biblically for, uh, forbidden according to modern preachers and theologians. Being transgendered is called enlightenment. Somebody show me in the word of God that God was confused in Genesis when he said, let us make man in our image, male and female. Not whether or not, or let them decide how they identify. I get it. I am a dinosaur. I am a unicorn. Some people think I'm an old mule that they should take me out to pastor, shoot me, and make me go away. But I guarantee you this. If they put chains on the doors of this church or they walk up here on this pulpit and arrest me for preaching the truth, I will still use my prophetic voice and say evil is evil and sin is sin. And we must repent and turn from our wicked ways if we want God to heal our land again. I want the band to come out and wrap things up here. Some say you're a defeatist, Greg. No, I'm not. I'm not a defeatist. I understand. I understand Jesus won the victory. I understand that. Follow me. Don't clap. I set you up. That's like saying we have laws but we have no police officers to enforce the laws. You know, this whole defunding the police, that is about the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. That alone should be proof positive that the devil is real and evil has been unleashed over our nation. You can't have that thought on your own. It was birthed by Satan himself. Why? Because he is the author of chaos and confusion. And when you get rid of police officers and law enforcement, you have nothing but confusion and chaos. When Jesus Christ incarnate went to the cross and shed his blood and died, they buried him, but on the third day, he rose again. That's legislation. Jesus has won the victory. But he has commissioned us. He has ordained us. He has empowered us to go and enforce the boundaries of the kingdom. So it is time for the church to put its foot down on the devil's head and assert himself and say, no, you don't. You, you don't. I'm taking authority because Jesus has given me his authority and I stand in that authority right now. We're going we're gonna to sing this song, Break Every Chain, because there is a spiritual force that needs to be broken this morning. But I want you to hear what Jesus says. Matthew 16, this is about enforcing the boundaries of the kingdom. I also say to you, Peter, that on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. We all shout right there. We all, oh yeah, praise God on that one. You know, read verse 19. This is about enforcing the boundaries of the kingdom. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. So I say to you, devil, no, you don't. 
I bind the wickedness, the evil, the corruption. I bind sin. I bind every bad and evil thought, the thought of murder, the thought of lust. I bind it right now. I bind alcoholism. I bind drug abuse. I bind abuse in the home. And I loose, I loose, I lose the church. I lose the power of God. I lose for us to use our authority. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 